a, an icebreaker. So you have a piece of paper in front of you. May I ask you to uh, stand up with your paper in your hands? Come on, it's safe what we're going to do, don't worry. No, nothing will happen. <coughs> okay, and uh, please turn your backs to me and face the walls of this room. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Let's wait for one more. Hi. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. So I'm going to give you some uh, instructions what to do with this piece of paper, but please uh, listen to my instructions carefully because I'm not going to repeat them. Okay? So, step number one fold the paper in the middle. Step number two, turn your paper 180 degrees counterclockwise. <laughs> Means opposite the clock. <laughs> 180 degrees counterclockwise, okay? Now, cut a small piece of paper on the upper left corner, size of a two euro coin, and fold your paper again in the middle. <coughs> okay? Hi, hi. Now, turn your paper 90 degrees clockwise. and cut a small piece of paper at the bottom left corner. Repeat this activity at the bottom right. Okay? Excellent. Now, can you please turn, and before you sit, let's uh, com see the papers of all of you. Come on, turn, turn to my, towards me. Let's look at the papers. How many of you have holes in the middle? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, uh, wow, thank you very much. Have a seat. Now, ladies and uh, gentlemen, if we were in NASA, they would say, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> okay? I gave everybody the same instructions. I believe I was crystal clear with my instructions. And you ended up with different versions of the same uh, thing. What happened? What happened? I mean, you study management, you study communication. There's something wrong here. It's either my fault or you guys never listen to your professors. <laughs> Come on. Is that a problem? What happened? Whatever you say in this classroom here is recorded. And as we say, whatever in Vegas stays in Vegas. So it's going to be between you and Internet of Things. <laughs> so, can you explain to me why we, uh, we, we didn't uh, end up with uh, the same version? Some of you had holes, some of you didn't, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> so what happened? Maybe not everyone has different perspective of the instructions that you followed. Different perspective of the instructions. So each one of you understood my instructions in a sort of different way. And whose fault is this? Guys, am I to blame or not? Shall I assume full political responsibility for what happened or not? Yes. Why? <laughs> Why? What was, what was my mistake? What were my assumptions? Yes, but were my instructions clear? 
Yeah, where? Are you sure? Okay. I accept that. Let's start from the beginning. What was my first instruction? Fold the paper in the middle, right? Yeah. Is that enough? Is that enough? No, because you can fold it too. You can fold, yes. Yeah. There are at least two ways to fold the paper. That's the Okay, did I say how I wanted you to hold the paper and how I wanted, okay. So starting from my uh, instructions, which were not complete, each one of you ended up with a different perspective. And of course, when I ask you to turn 180 degrees counterclockwise, that was a traumatic experience, right? Because some of you would even move with the whole body not understanding exactly from geography. <laughs> So my question is, if we go back to reality, do we experience this kind of situation in communication? Always. Every time, right? In personal situations, many people got uh, to get divorced because they couldn't fold the paper properly, you know, sometimes, okay? But in business, what is one of the things that often managers uh, do, and it's a mistake in communication? which is related to this activity. Do we assume that we are, the, we are communicating in the proper way and if something is wrong, it's the other people's fault? Have you ever felt that? Yeah. So if I'm not a good manager, or maybe not, that's too heavy. If I'm not an efficient <laughs> manager, I assume that the way I communicate is correct and it's your fault if you don't get my message right but it should be the other way around now what is the relevance of this activity alongside breaking the ice with our topic today about storytelling why do you think we started with this activity any ideas So one thing is to make sure that we communicate. Guys, are you in this uh, training? Come. So one thing is to make sure that we have the right channels of communication and we understand what difficulties could happen as a result of our own way of communicating, thinking we're the best communicators. The other thing is to start exploring more effective ways to communicate in a world which is bombarded with digital information. Can you consider, for example, uh, a PowerPoint with a regression chart showing the correlation between two variables and all these kind of complicated charts to be told to your audience through a story? Have you ever been in situations in some of the classes, and I'm not talking about your school, I'm talking generally, where a lot of data, okay, fill the PowerPoint slide, and at some point you're lost because you cannot follow all this information? It happened. It happens, right? Now, can you think how we could simplify even these complicated uh, slides through a story? Even a regression chart so tells a story. That's the whole idea. So my point, what I'm trying to, uh, I'll try to do today until we finish at 9 o'clock tonight. It's a joke, by the way. By that time, I should be in Prague, <laughs> hopefully. Um, is to make a case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, about the importance of storytelling in our lives. And to make my point even more impactful, I will share a personal story with you, starting from now. All right? So back in 1990, where perhaps most of you were still a suspicion of conception on this planet. Depends on your mom. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, finishing my, a master's I did in Boston, 
and I had a professor who was my mentor. And that person one day decided to throw a party and invite uh, some of his former students to the party. One of the students who was supposed to, who was coming, was a young man who was involved in a car accident, had injured his spine, and as a result was stranded on a wheelchair. There was a chance for him to recover, but his psychology was so bad, he would never believe there was any luck for him. The day came, I was there helping my prof. Students started coming, and that young man came on his uh, wheelchair, and he was the only one who came without, you know, a gift, whatever they bring, a glass of wine, okay? And when they met after two or three years, and they kissed and hugged each other, the student turns to his prof and says, prof, I didn't bring you a present because mine is different. And by the moment he says that, he stands up and starts walking. And he turns to his prof and says, thanks to you, thanks to these years you've been next to me and you believed in me, you gave me the power and the strength to believe in myself. Thank you for giving me my life back. By the way, this is a true story. I, I didn't make it up. I lived it as, it as if I'm living it now. Tell me, what is the message? For any leader, you're not going to find these stories in MBA books or whatever. Even the gurus of, mar of management don't talk about these things. But what is, what is, what is the story message here for any leader? For all of us, because we're all leaders by decision, by choice. If you truly believe in people and you show that in a genuine way, you can make them believe in themselves and stand up on their feet again. That's the whole thing. Now tell me, would it have an impact on you if I were to tell this story using PowerPoint slides? Bullets, giving this story, story bullets six, six by six, six the bullet? bullet. No. no. Did, Did it have, have a, a different impact on my story? Yes. That's the, the whole thing about storytelling. Can we all do it? Yes. We have, we have, we were born with stories. Okay, we waited the moment that our parents or grandfathers, uh, grandparents would tell us a story, right? And what was magic about it? What's the magic thing about storytelling? Which is, which beats any PowerPoint, I repeat that, you've ever dreamed of in your lives. Okay, even made by the gurus of PowerPoint. I don't know if there's any guy like that, but never mind. What is this thing that attracts us and keeps our attention to stories? Because, we, yeah, because it's something personal, obviously. And what's another thing? We are making, okay, we're becoming part of the story, yes. And one more thing, we wait to hear the end. The end in stories is unpredictable. Even if you remember our, you know, times where we're next to our parents or grandfathers, we would hear the same story every day, every night. We would make them, you know, feel pissed off because, come on, man, I mean, I've told you the story 10,000 times. He said, no, daddy, I want to hear the story again. Why? Because you always want to hear the end. And in these stories, the end was always, you know, a happy ending, which made things even better. So, if we know from science that there is evidence that stories work, why not use them as a means of communication that will make a greater impact on how we deal at work, personally, or in any other you know, fashion we would like. So, Let me just go through the, how we, we're going to spend the day. So now we already started about uh, what it means to tell stories, why stories have an impact 
and why they matter so much in our lives. We should take this up until uh, 12, then we're going to have a break, then we will continue and we're going to look for uh, stories that you can start developing to promote your own brand, your personal brand, okay? And then we will go up uh, until four, local time, uh, with more practice. I promise you an interactive workshop. I only have 250 slides to show, so the rest of it will be interactive. That's a joke, by the way. Okay? So before we move on, who has the first question? Tip number one, Dale Carnegie training, folks. When you do a presentation and you go to a part where you uh, want people to ask questions, never ask, are there any questions? Because most of the times, nobody asks. And when somebody asks a question, don't tell them, that's a great question, thank you very much. Because everybody else feels bad about their own questions because they didn't get the same encouragement from you. All right, so better repeat the question, paraphrase it, rephrase it, so that everybody listens to it. And never go, if you are in a room like this, right next to the person, can I use you as my guinea pig for now? Yeah, and you start, she asks a question, I give her an answer, and we're the two of us, and I ignore everybody else in this room. Go diagonally. Start a dialogue, but in this way you include everybody. These are easy tips, okay? <clears throat> so, back to my thing. Who has the first question? It's probably earlier. No. Yeah, that's a question, by the way, from my end. All right. If you don't get anybody asked, then wh how, what do you do in a case like this? Most people feel so awkward when, uh, when the audience do not want to ask. Then th th somebody says, I believe I covered everything. So you feel this joy that because people are not asking that you were a perfect presenter. Mm, not really. You can throw a question to your audience. And then they start talking. So how many of you had, have had experiences of storytelling in any kind of uh, context? At work, in your classes, or in any other kind of situation? It seems less than half. Okay, we're going to uh, see what that means in the future, shortly, actually. Okay, a professor from Harvard uh, used, to, used to say that if you are a leader, you can actually influence your people through stories not through data, not through facts, but by appealing to their emotions, okay? And some of the greatest leaders, and not only, are the ones who have, who have been using stories, personal stories, stories that they failed and learned with their people to inspire them, okay? Let me tell you another story. This is brief, but it's a story. Uh, you probably know, I don't know if, uh, if there are uh, these uh, companies here in your city, uh, NGOs that uh, produce this monthly street magazine and they give it to homeless people to sell in front of stations. It's around many, uh, many cities, I'm sure there's also in, uh, maybe in bigger cities in Poland, okay? So, Homeless people get this magazine, they find a nice spot in a corner, and they sell it. And that's a way for them to make some money and help themselves if they don't have a place to, to stay. I was once uh, watching the uh, general manager of the Greek company who were doing this, this thing in Greece. And at some point, the uh, journalist asked uh, him, Mr. I don't remember his name, what is your vision? Okay for your company. What do you think he said? Remember, a magazine, street magazine, 
people, uh, homeless people sell for one or two euro to make some decent money and cover their main expenses. So when this journalist was asked, what is your vision? What do you think he said? Any ideas? Yes, I, I know guys it's too, too early for brain uh, functions, but that's okay. <laughs> what do you think he said? I mean, what would you say if you were in his shoes, if you were the manager of this company? Okay, so help, whatever, yeah. So well, you know what he said? He said, I dream that one day my company will no longer exist. Isn't that a story? Yes, it is a story. Because it shows the impact. One day we, ho we will have fulfilled our mission. No more homeless people on the streets. My company will no longer be needed. That's my dream. How more powerful can you make this than exactly telling people what your dream is that you're all, you're, by stopping to exist, you have fulfilled your mission? Would you like to work for a company like this? If the mission is like that, coming from this leader? Say yes. yes. <laughs> it's, it's strong. I mean, you feel a work for, uh, f serving a purpose? Okay, the idea, and this is a story actually, because in our brains it touches the right hemisphere, and it's all about emotions. Short story, but still a story. Okay, for the next uh, two minutes and 13 seconds, please, as you are in your tables, have a short chat of what you are expecting from this workshop today. By the moment we finish at four, what would you like to take with you out of this room? Expectations, okay? So let's have a chat as you are sitting next to each other. And you don't know each other, eh? so it's about time that you get to know each other. Do you ladies know each other? <laughs> okay. Then you can talk. <laughs> I have a reason. <laughs>
So, who would like to share? What are your expectations? How would you like this day to uh, finish at four and what would be your takeaways after we complete this workshop today? One by one, please. Take your time, no problem. So, shall, I, shall we uh, have a discussion or you want me democratically to start pointing to people? Uh, so, let's go the less democratic way. <laughs> you. My expectation from this, I, I, I want to inspire people in the future because um, I'm into bodybuilding. You know what? Bodybuilding. Okay. okay. Yes. And uh, I want to help other people like with their fitness goals and stuff like that. And I'm expecting this will help me to send the message, you know? Because there's a lot of people who do the same thing. But you always have to use, the, I don't know, the special way of communication to make you unique from, from the others. Yes. yes. Actually, Actually, storytelling story in sales in general started. Uh, the the first, first people, the pioneers, were real estate agents in the United States when they were selling houses. So you know what they did? They would take the client, they would show them the house, which is for sale, but they would never show an empty house. They would put a sofa on one corner, a nice painting on another, and they were creating the vision for the future. So they were having the client there and say, imagine yourselves, you know, in this place, sitting in this comfortable uh, sofa or whatever. So painting a story. And that excited the imagination of their clients. So it, it started back in those times. We're talking now about, what, 20, 25 years ago, maybe more? So, yes, it definitely, to make a difference, people now want to hear stories. That's right. Who else? What are their expectations? How about you, ladies? It was about, it should be about uh, social media, how to promote yourself, because storytelling is more related to Facebook and Instagram, which is important nowadays, uh, because it's a, a huge platform to promote your product, or your business, or something, or yourself. So, so some basic things you become, become an influencer at some point in your life how you can really tell a story about yourself and differentiate from so many other influencers who are not really doing this thing, right? Because now the world is full of influencers. So we have to make a difference. <laughs> Anybody else from this side of the camp now? Expectations from the workshop. How about you ladies? What would you expect? How about you, sir? Um, seeing the window, what being interested in the HR field, mm -hmm. I, I believe um, it's um, it's better. Whether you are hiring someone or you are firing someone, it's um, it's better for you to try and include the some sense of emotions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just being like uh, someone who just say you are fired or you are hired, but being able to communicate what you are trying to, yes. whether you are hiring the person, what you are trying to achieve mm -hmm. by hiring that person, the ROI of hiring the person. And if you are firing the person, you just don't give hand over the letter to the person. There has, there has to be something, you have to be emotional towards that person, mm -hmm. not just trying to just go and Okay. okay, thank, thank you. you. I, believe I believe we have some, uh, some great ideas, so let's, let's move on. <clears throat> okay. Now, what we're, going, what we're going to see, as I've already introduced you to the topic, so in, uh, in the business context, whether it's in sales, whether it's in branding yourself through the media or anything else, whether it is you are leading a team of people, 
we now have evidence from neuroscience that the best way to communicate for an impact is through stories. And if science say, says so, who are we to challenge this kind of knowledge? So what we're going to see is to build on that. We all live in this digital world. We all know that we are bombarded with uh, data every day, most of which is not necessary. How do we make sense of that data? So no more of PowerPoint slides. Suppose you were doing this class or you were studying in this school 30 years ago. No PowerPoint, no internet. What was happening with the schools in those times? How come they were so successful? What did this, the people of those times do to influence students? Reading from a book? Up to a level, they were telling their own story through the knowledge, okay? So why not go back to these methods and take advantage of technology at the same time? Now, <clears throat> again, back to some scientific evidence. Our mind, our brain, retains 65 to 75 percent of information, mostly through stories. We know from science that when you are in a classroom and you are bombarded with PowerPoint slides, in the first 10 minutes, the brain is tired. Even if your professor is as equal as Einstein, doesn't matter. So there is scientific evidence and we have to go with it and find the ways to inspire people. Have a look please at this slide. It's from a pharmaceutical uh, company. It's not the Botox that you know. It's just a coincidence <laughs> for the name. And this is the advertisement uh, which tells the story of this uh, liquid someone would put on their leg if they suffer from some kind of pain. So that's the advertisement they were using showing their history from 1994 up to 2014 with a message, relax, relieve, release. Okay? Is this a story? Do you see anything there, like a story? Is there a hero, <laughs> as we have in stories? No. Is there a, a happy end? No. Only message. Relax, relieve. Okay? Would you get this product based on this information? Unless you are dying from pain. I mean, okay, so that's the only thing I have available. What can I do? All right? But under normal conditions, would that be enough to make you say, yeah, I'm going to get this Botox thing? Okay. Now. That's how they changed their ads through a story. Same company, Botox. See the message, the logo, small. I cried. I sat in the car and cried. It was five years since I'd been able to drive my nephew to football practice. Five years since I'd been able to open my hand. Same company, same product, different story. How about that? If somebody had the same issues, you become part of this problem, right? Yeah, you relate. You say, yeah, I was in the same situation myself once. Maybe not 
taking my nephew <laughs> to the football game, but not being able to use my hand. That's a story, and it has an impact. Now, if you consider the difference between the two, you can definitely say that if you were looking at this advertisement, perhaps you would say, well, that's really impactful. Uh -huh. So here's the evidence, folks, about how a story, a realistic one, okay? It's not that this guy had pains and the next day he climbed Mount Everest and came back. That nobody would believe him, right? But it's a realistic story about the impact. I already introduced you to the topic of neuroscience, just a little bit of uh, scientific evidence, which says that uh, a professor once was uh, studying a person who had an accident and his uh, brain was pierced by an object. The, the, the person didn't die, okay? He found out that this object had affected the right part of the brain and that made him very impossible for him to make decisions. Okay? So there is scientific evidence of what, of the point I'm trying to, uh, to make here. And what I told you before is that we process information through emotions much, much faster than any other kind, way, or kind of way of getting a message. Okay, I'm going through these things. Now, it's time to start practicing. What makes a story? Easy template. For a story, you need a message. Always start with the end in mind. What do you want your audience to take with them? That's the message. How many times... Have you been in um, watching a movie? Okay? The movie was fantastic. You loved it. And when you went out of the theater, you wouldn't remember anything. Why? Because the message was not clear enough. Okay? So whenever you think about the story, the first thing you should do is to think about the message you want to share with your audience. Second, thing. There should be some kind of conflict, like that guy before, he got issues with his hands, okay? He was struggling. He could not find a way to relieve himself from the pains. That's the conflict, that's the struggle. And the struggle, when you have it in your story, is what engages people to listen to you. So don't make your story easy to be predicted, okay? so that people know already what the outcome will be. It should have characters. If it's a personal story, it's about you. If it's a, a sales story, it's about a client of yours who had a, a struggle and the problem was solved. If it's a story about your company, the character is your company, okay? And of course, you build the plot. When you want to share a story with your audience, never tell them, hey, I have a story for you. That's too banal. And never finish, of course, with a classic way, and they lived happily ever after. That's for Cinderella stories. Okay? That's not the point here. So, <coughs> what I will ask you to do is... I'm going to play a video, it's short, like three and a half minutes. Generally, if you, in presentations, you want to show videos, which is good, please make sure they're short. Don't use these 15 or 20 or half an hour minute videos because your audience, no matter what the video is, at some point, they're bored, okay? So I'm going to play a video by Philips. I'm not going to make any comment. I want you to watch the video, and then we're going to go, to go back and see what kind of a story 
this is. And based on that, I will then ask you kindly to uh, do a group activity. Uh, guys, can we play the video? Shall I also play it from here? Okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, how, how come we don't... <whistles> Guys, I need your help. Can we uh, play the video here because I don't see it? Okay, uh, thank you. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. That's fine.
No. Was that a story? Yes. Could you consider think of a better way for Philips to introduce what they're doing? Is there anything here about the product of Philips? No, but it's just the story. What is the message? Is it a message to uh, strengthen the brand image of Philips as a company in innovation? Yeah. That they're doing something to serve those hundreds of people in Iceland <laughs> who have issues with sleepless nights? Yeah. yeah? They could have had a proper, you know, this kind of classical advertising messages. Here's the product, here's a device or drugs or whatever they're giving, and that's how we help people. But would that be enough? You may not feel part of this uh, poor guy from Iceland who has sleepless nights, but there have been times <laughs> that all of us at some time had sleepless nights, maybe because we're drunk or that's for any other reason, but still, we understand the feeling. Okay. Now, <clears throat> who is the hero here? Who is the hero? The fisherman. The Icelandic fisherman. Okay? What is the struggle? What is the conflict? Sleepless nights, chronic fatigue, apnea. Okay? What is the solution? Philips is working on that. Okay? Is there anything unethical? Machiavellian, manipulative in the way Philips is promoting this message? Yeah. Yes? Why? It's like greenwashing. It's like all of the brands are doing it right now. No, we need to be together. Yada, yada. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with that? Are they, are they, are they selling, selling something which would do harm to people? I, I, no, I'm talking about this specific message, not generally, okay? I'm talking about the specific context of this message. I understand what you're saying. Yes, there are cases that some m messages could be manipulative. Yeah, the, point is, the point they is... Okay, no, no, I, I, I understand. The context here is, in the way this message is shown, do we feel this kind of contribution of this company to help these people? At least this is what they're doing, right? Okay, and I would think, I don't know uh, how successful they've been in the end, that eventually probably it helps. Or it shows some kind of brand identity that we're taking care or we're trying to help this suffering uh, population in Iceland, in any other part of the world, of people f suffering from chronic fatigue as a result of sleepless nights, and there are quite a lot of them. Was there any data in the video? Only th at the end, right? Yeah. How many, what percentage of ice, Icelandic fishermen are suffering from, uh, from chronic fatigue and apnea? That was it. And then the whole thing was about the message at the end that Philips is doing something as innovative to help. Outside the ethical or non-ethical or whatever kind of the message. That's a story. Now, can, could you tell this story without the video? Because here it's more impactful because there's music behind it, okay, because there's a hero and we see all the struggles of that person. But suppose you were in a situation and you want to tell this story of Philips okay, without video, just with words, following the same pattern, a hero, the fisherman, okay, a struggle, sleepless nights, the solution. This is your challenge for now, ladies and gentlemen. I would like you to form groups and work together to create, craft the story of Philips, as if you cannot show it through a video.
based on the same plot. Your story must be short. Generally speaking, tip, when you start telling a story and it's your personal story, don't start from the very beginning of the day. I woke up one day, I brushed my teeth, had breakfast, and put on my clothes, and then started driving to the university. We don't care about this information. Okay, go straight to the point of what the struggle is. So it has to be laconic, which means short and to the point. Don't let yourselves get carried away by the fact that you have enough time for this. Louis Pascal, this great philosopher, one wrote a letter to a friend and, and said, I have made this letter longer than usual only because I didn't have the time to make it shorter. So time is a very relative sense. God created the world in seven days, but he had been around for ages. All right? So let's work on that. Okay? Uh, would you like to work as you are already, geographically speaking, in this room, like the four of you here? We need one story, okay? It doesn't have to be uh, a Nobel awarding story. We're not going to uh, go for egg, Emmy uh, grants or whatever, okay? But just, just make a story. Okay, guys? You know what you have to do, right? You know what you have to do. Good. Good. by this kind of language like a tall or a song or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can use one of these names to start the story. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay? going for uh, Emmy uh, Awards. No worries. Okay? So, who wants to start and share the story with uh, the colleagues? Yes, madam. Would you like to stand up? Please give the lady a hand. Thank you. Thank you. A story that can you all read this? This is her, and if you can raise your voices a little bit, okay, I will try. Good, thank you. So, uh, can I read? Uh, Absolutely, you thank you. So, this is a story about Jack, an Icelandic fisherman who works hard not for the money but for the passion towards the job and for the contribution to building and maintaining family traditions. Jack runs days and night, sleeplessly breaks fishing net. Despite all the love for his job, he struggles with insomnia. He becomes extremely exhausted to the extent that his body begins to shut down and develop apnea. Um, when he gets home, he tries to sleep, but he just can't. He can just hardly can. Knowing this as the chronicle problem to several Icelandic fishermen as well as others who have the same problem, Philips is developing its innovation to help and aid uh, them. Okay. Can you make the last part make more, let's say, I know she's not going to like this, but never mind. <laughs> a more, I'm kidding, a more emotionally touching. Can you repeat the last sentence, what you said there? Problem to several Icelandic fishermen as well as others. Philip is developing his innovation to aid them. Okay. okay. <laughs> how, how can we say, say that, that in front of everybody here, how can we say that in fewer words to have the greatest impact as a message? Keep in mind that again from neuroscience we know that messages which are about six words long have the highest impact. 
on memory retention and impact in general. So how could you tell this in fewer words, still make it impact, emotionally impactful in the good sense of the word, of course. So not manipulative, not Machiavellian, but to the point. That's also a question for everybody. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for what you have. Uh, is that? <laughs> okay. okay. Be grateful for what? The wonderful work. The sentence is how you will end up all this story with a message about Phillips in a few words to make it as impactful and emotional as possible. I don't have the answer, by the way. Don't look at me. There's no one answer here. Okay. So, any ideas? <laughs> yes? Ready? How about this? I'm just again thinking of the top of my head. Phillips is innovating to give, to give Icelandic fishermen a good night's sleep. What do you think? Is it good? Yes. Not bad. <laughs> okay, something like that, okay? Again, there's no perfect answer here. I'm just trying to give you the messages. Because what will stay at the end is the message. You remember the story, you associate with the story, eventually you want to associate the brand name with the impact and the result. In this case, we need few words. How many of you like Nike shoes and athletic athletics? Are you fans of Nike? Some of you are. You know how when Nike started and uh, came uh, in, in for the first time in the industry, what was their first motto? Crash Adidas. That's how they started. When they first made the present, present so many decades ago, the first motto was Crash Adidas. <laughs> Is it a story? Yes. Have they achieved it? In a way, in some products? Yes. But that's how they started. <laughs> Two words. Crash Adidas. It's a story. Because it goes to our emotions, not to practical things. Whenever you wear tennis uh, or whatever, working shoes, you don't say, oh, I'm crashing Adidas now by, work, by wearing Nike. You don't care about that. Okay? So, thank you. You were spot on. And the last part, make it shorter for them because this is what your audience should take with them at the end. Who's next? Another story. Yes. Please give the lady a hand. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we came up with this story. It says, um, where does your omega-3 acids come from? Where does your fish come from? Thousands of miles away in the Atlantic, fishermen are spending hours tirelessly at sea, wave after wave. They, the cold numbing the motion and the workload only to reach the shore for the waves to stop, the workload to stop, but sleep is nowhere to be seen. A lot of our parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters experience this wave stop. Us too. I'm sure you've experienced it too. As Phillips, we are looking to solve this sudden stop. Peaceful waters, peaceful sleep. Thank you. Now, your story has two details. You went faster to the point. It's great. And that shows how stories can have the same impact without necessarily, you know, having the same length or telling all the details. Can you please repeat us the end, the ending, if you don't mind? Okay. So this is more emotional, okay. And it ties back together. Thank you. Thank you. Any, let's have one more, please. 
who wants to try? Okay, sir. A hand to your uh, colleague, thank you. about the product and its impact is the word hopefully because <laughs> hopefully make okay so it will happen or not we have to be a little bit more assertive yeah. can you change the last part please right <laughs> don't worry how can you make it stronger more impactful more ad assertive without using words that we say okay let's hope my product will work what would you say at the end again uh, what was the last part yes Okay, improvise again without hopefully. Philips is working innovatively to end this problem. Something like that. Okay? Uh, we're being recorded, yes? So Philips will listen to our stories in case we get some uh, investment. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Thank you. Yes, sir. Let's have one more and give the gentleman a hand. Uh, would you stand up, please? Thank you. Okay, so the story will be about an average Arctic fisherman who is suffering from sleepless nights. The main reason is his work. Try to imagine such a condition where it's not easy to find a uh, lift for a regular person. It's the most London north you can imagine. London nights near the fireplace, cold twilight seas, or around the clock, six day in a row with, a, uh, with only several hours to take a rest. Separation out of family and these things can affect on the mental health and statement. In this environment, such people have to stay for a pretty long time. Unfortunately, in other days, people who may associate their minds with the great bearers of their past spikings who suffer from such sickness. But here came the modern solutions, and one of the one word of this is Philips. Okay, thank you. Fewer details, not so many details. You're spot on what you want to, to show. Okay, you can just reduce the, the details of the story, and it will have the same impact. Okay, right, are we good? Uh, anyone else sharing? Yes? Let's have one more. A hand to the lady, please, thank you. Most, just like his father and his father's father. He enjoys the beautiful landscapes and the peaceful existence away from the cities. The feeling he gets from being the one with the waves and then the sky also comes in waves. Some days are better than the others. He started destroying his father and his father's father. Inability to sleep, inability to think, inability to rest. Endless days and reckless nights in a country where night is six months a year. His son will have it better. He's not gonna drink himself to death. Uh, because our job is to make yours easier. Philips is innovating young. Thank you. Good. So I guess you grasped the message, right? What are the key takeaways? What do we learn from this first attempt to craft a story? 
what are the main things that you should do when you write a story and what are the things that you, sh you should not do. Any ideas? First step. Yes. So based on what you experience, the story we show, your stories on paper, okay, what are some key takeaways? What are one or two things you should do when you write a story? And what are the things you should avoid when you write a story? Make it too long. Not too long, okay. Not too many details. Spot on, okay. What is one thing that we uh, always have to keep in mind? The ending, the ending. When you were writing the story in your teams, did you start by first thinking of what the ending should be like? Maybe not, because it's your first time, that's understood. But whenever you prepare a story, okay, please start with the end in mind. What is the thing you want your audience to take with them? And then start building on the hero, the details, and anything else. You will see how that will work in a perfect way. Uh, we are here uh, actually for another half hour before we break. Would you like to have the break now? I mean, we live in a democratic society, right? And I decide what you're going to do. Just like Garfield the Cat who once said, you all have a right to my opinion. That's democracy. <laughs> let's have the break now, okay? Let's break for 15 uh, minutes, please. Because then I'm going to have you do another creative activity, but I will keep it as a secret. So please come back after 15 minute commercials. Okay, are you ready for uh, another activity? Will you apply your creativity in full? Say yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I will just uh, 
take out all the technology. What happened? You don't know the trick? Really? With this? It's nothing magic, uh, madam. It's just button B. When you are in PowerPoint slide mode and you press B, off it comes. When you press it again, off it, wo if, off it goes. If you want to impress your audience, they all look at this while you open it and you close it. But speaking about presentations, why do you think sometimes when we present, it's good to you know, close the, uh, the screen, not show it at all? Yes. Keep in mind that the, a, a good slide, PowerPoint slide, if you only have information, not pictures or anything, and you have bullets, should follow the six by six rule. Six bullets, six words per bullet. Nothing more, nothing less. The PowerPoint is not to read from the slides, unless you want to kill your audience and send them to sleep. Okay? So when you have bullet points, follow the rule six by six. The message should be coming from you. And when you don't need the PowerPoint and you want to interact with your audience, just blank it and start interacting, then go back. Okay? Now, all of you, stand up, come with me. No, don't worry, there's nothing uh, dangerous about it. <laughs> with me, yes. <laughs> Guys, here, everybody. Okay, <clears throat> what we're going to do for the uh, next uh, maybe 45 minutes, I'm going to uh, break you in teams. Depends how many we are here, but up to five. Not as you are sitting, but randomly. Okay. All right. And what you will have to do is make a story out of this. The story can be anything you want to imagine. Stupid, humorous, with a meaning. It doesn't matter. How we're going to do it is the issue. In your teams, on a piece of paper, the first person of the team will start the story in the usual way, once upon a time, blah, blah, blah. After a minute, I will call time, and you will pass your paper to the person sitting next to you. That person will continue the story for another minute. How you will continue your story, it's your own baby. You want to change it entirely, you want to continue from what, how the other person started, that's really up to you. After a minute, maybe a little bit more because you need to read the previous part, the next person will take over until we finish in the same mode and the last person will have the story complete and we will be sharing the stories after all of them are finished. Again, how creative you want to be, how humorous, how sarcastic or whatever comes in your mind from this thing here, I know what you think already, how come this brow, this square box head is with a rounded bo heads, right? I don't know. You'll see, you'll find out. Okay? So how you do it, it's your responsibility. Are we clear? Yeah. Good. Now, can I ask you to go back to your seats and then I'm going to make the random teams.
So let's see how many people we have here. Twenty twenty-four. Great. So we can have four teams of six. All right. I'm calling numbers. One, two, three, four. So the ones will be one team, the twos will be one team, and vice versa. Okay, it's easy. All right? Are we clear? Good. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? One, two. Yes? Okay. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So, in this place, please take your seats. So, let's have one team here. Let's have the one uh, people, one team here. Okay, find your place and please sit wherever you are. And please sit down, take your seats in your teams. You will need one piece of paper to start writing, so please take your seats. Guys, excuse me. Train passing, thank you. Sorry. imagination and your creativity to make a story. The first person will start, ah, one thing please, make sure your handwriting is legible <laughs> so, so that the next person and the people are coming after will be able to uh, read what you're saying. Okay? So have you decided who will be the first to, to start? <coughs> okay. Now. Join this team there. Yeah, because we, we, we put people randomly and uh, go here with them. <clears throat> okay, so please start. You have one and a half minutes. The rest of you are not looking. Just wait. You're, the, you're writing first? No, no. Who's writing the story? I write because my, uh, they understand my uh, writing. You're writing. Yeah, my handwriting. They understand that's why I write. I listen to his story and write. Okay, but uh, then if, okay. Ah, oh, we don't but have you, to. But you don't have to. I don't want you oh, to go. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Don't, when you write, don't let everybody else know what you're writing. Please, but only one person starts. You are, you are one to start? Good. 
So one of don't let the other people know what you're writing. Mm -hmm. Don't read it. Just let them wait until the next person takes the story and continues from where you finished it.
you want to take the story to another level. Yes, you have to. Every person reads the, everything before. Okay? Because you have to know somebody. Please go to the next person. Thank you. Can read the whole whatever is written there to get my So next person please. Doesn't matter if you haven't finished. Yeah. But if it would be easy. 
Let's have five more minutes to finish the stories and then we're going to read them aloud. And one of them gets the full exercise. Okay, start completing the story, please. Thank <laughs> you. 
So what is your name? Finishing the story? Finish it. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Just for the time. We're, we're, we're good. No worries. Are you, uh, are you done? Yes. Okay. Oh my God. How can I read this handwriting? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let me have the story. Ladies and gentlemen. We are starting to read the stories, so please pay attention, okay? <laughs> signore e signore, attenzione prego. Grazie. Okay, story from this team. First one, randomly. You may help me with the handwriting at some point, right? Okay. All right. Once upon a time, there was a young girl born a square in the universe of circle beings. Wow, sounds like Twilight Zone. <laughs> it was difficult for the girl being a square, constantly bullied, trolled on social media. What the hell do you say that? Okay. And then finally, that's the next person go, she made friend with a nice girl 
who has the same issue. She suffered from anxiety. They tried to make themselves special, but not strange. Yes, they were different from others, but it doesn't mean that they are worse than others. So they created their own community for girls and boys with the same problem. <laughs> Why is the problem to have your hair to be square? Anyway, every day there were a lot of people who want to join them, and they formed a clique. Then the people who made fun of them began to see them differently and became friendly with them. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Sorry, oh, uh, I missed your part. Yeah, what was this? Answer, answer that everyone is unique in their own way. Thank you. And so that everyone is unique in their own way. And they lived happily ever after. Thank you very much. Hand, please, to the ladies here uh, and the boys. Sorry about that, guys. Now, you see different people writing a story, how it makes sense from different minds. OK, thank you. Next, I'll go there and I'm coming back. Uh, will I be able to read you? Oh, my God. OK, your attention, please. Story coming from the all ladies fairy tale group. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Once upon a time in France. Oh la la, oh la la, yeah. <laughs> Five friends who would love to do the big challenge of visiting all the bars from the north to the south, drinking one beer in each one of them. The goal is to arrive alive in the last bar the most beautiful and special one. Is that what you're doing here when you're coming to study? <laughs> Shame on you. Did you hear that? How many bars and clubs do you have in this city? <laughs> okay, continue. Now, next person. Each of, the, each of them, oh, we have names here. Julie, Charlotte, Kalisa, Stanit, Stanis, Ju OK, Juliana, did I kill the name? No. Chose a different way to start their journey. Charlotte made a crazy decision to fly to the end of the earth to meet her old high school professor who she fell in love with. How did this come from this picture? <laughs> What they didn't know, that's another, the next person, she was also in love with the same professor, by the way. What they didn't know was that out of the five of them, one was a little bit crazy. <laughs> Julie had episodes where she would have out-of-body experiences and travel to another world. <laughs> Oof. Now we start astral projection, living from our body and returning at some point later on in future. Nice. Julie was afraid to share this with the others and kept this to herself. Charlotte Kalisa Stanitz felt worried about Julie, but she did not share her secret. They all went about their adventures and lived life as if the world was ending soon. My God. <laughs> Kalisa traveled to Africa and learned about different cultures. She was surprised to see diverse cultures and way of thinking, being. Stanis started a clothing line, but didn't get enough visibility. <laughs> it's too early. Come on. After you hear the storytelling workshop, we're going to do better. Juliana was listening to all these stories and tried to write a story about all their experience. She wanted to create an interesting story to share with other people. Thank you very much, but don't drink so much. <laughs> Give them a hand, please. Okay, guys, may I have your story? Can I, will I be able to read the, oh my God. All right, here I will try to read between the lines <laughs> because the handwriting is a little bit, okay, uh, that's okay. Once upon a time in a little city, five 
brothers who lost their parents struggled to survive and the elderly took it upon himself to, uh, se to me take care for his brothers and it wasn't as easy as he thought it would be. Perfect? Thank you. Now, that's, here's the difficult part. They tried themselves in different things as farming, hunting, fishing, drinking. No, that was not, it was from the other story. All of them, <laughs> but the elder uh, helped one another, whatever. The brother gone through a lot of distress to provide for the siblings, but upon it all, they were united and prosperous in the chosen fields. The elder brother, parenthesis, person with a square head, in case you didn't realize, yeah, <laughs> received an offer of his life. Let's see what this offer is. He was in uh, interned to another company which researched a new way to develop a cure for cancer. Okay. But when he came into the company, he was offered, he was sudden to create, man, can you help me read the rest he of the is stories? Is he cured for cancer? Can, is, is that, okay, please read it, that, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Okay. Uh huh. Carry on. The last part of the yes. This story has an impact that I thought that conveys the completion, the solution of the suffering of cancer. That then if the next is possible for the son to end his medical practices, I think this is more holy given to the world. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Your turn now, huh? Where's the story? Uh -huh. <coughs> what is the name of this uh, guy? Yashu. Yashu. It's like a Greek, Yamas. No, no, Yamas is uh, when we say to our health when we drink. Okay. Once upon a time, a guy called Yashu lived in Africa for years and found it difficult to find his purpose of life rather than doing the normal routine just like everyone else. He felt that in order to manifest that happiness, he was to take the visit to the unknown. Am I right? Okay. Such as wanted to go abroad and develop a sense of pure manifestation of a different life. In order to achieve this life, he had to travel and find a better sense of life. You sound like uh, a Buddhist monk now. <laughs> That's fine. He left home be, uh, because he started to find his life. He's still finding, guys. All the time you're looking for the place. Finally, let's settle down somewhere. Okay. He arrived in Poland during the, during the cold season. He was so excited about his new adventures that he started his first day at the university only to find out people were very unfriendly to him. Oops. He felt left out because he was different from the people from the beautiful country that he chose. He had a hard time socializing with people. He was bullied. One day, some group of international students came to him. He was nervous about it, but it turned out the students were really nice to him. They accepted him. Uh, showed him the city, he then felt accepted and happy with his new life. It was rough, but it's all worth the hard journey. Thank you very much. Okay, you may return, you may return to your seats. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Like Steve Jobs, one last thing. Stay where you are. And I will democratically choose one person from each group to help me out with an activity. Come with me. Come with me. Yes. 
Come with me. Sorry? She, it doesn't matter. We're not going to drink now. Uh, come with me. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're not leaving. Don't worry. No, no, no. It's not the break. Okay. Close, close the door. I'm going to share a story with you. Okay? Then you're going to go back to your things and whisper the story to the ear of the person sitting next to you, and then it goes until the end. You know this broken telephone thing. Yes. Listen carefully to the story. John Edward Dobson. All right? John Edward Dobson. It's easy. John Edward Dobson. Once uh, also known as Cowboy. Also known as Cowboy fell from the skies on a Wednesday evening when the court sentenced him to one year in prison because he was, he was caught stealing cookies from the supermarket. This was the highest penalty ever given, ever given for such an offense. Right? Shall I say it again? <laughs> so, John Edward Dobson, also known as Cowboy, fell from the skies on a Wednesday evening when the court sentenced him to one year in prison because he was caught stealing cookies from a supermarket. This was the highest penalty ever given for such an offense. Ready? Brave. Courageous, good luck, God be with you. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, wait one second, we're going to play this uh, game that we all know as broken telephone or whatever. So your people are going to share the story I gave them in the ears of the person sitting next to them and then the story will travel until the last person will tell us the story. Okay, so you tell the story to her, but nobody else listening now. You don't write it. You only say it once, and then we go to the next person until you are probably the last or one of you, okay? Okay, okay man? Good. Are you sure? <laughs> All right. Don't let anyone listen to it. Now come to him, close. Yes but uh, without listening. Okay.
Come on, guys, quickly. Who's next? And what are you doing there and listening? And sneak? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yes, but you said they're coming at 1.30. Yeah, it's fine. Yes, but, um, but then we have this lunch break at... Uh getting serious, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hear the stories. All right? Would you like to start, please? Stand up. Relax. Take it easy. It's not the end of the world. Look at your face, your classmates, your colleagues, and tell us the story. He was a cowboy, he stole something, Next and he was in jail for one year. A cowboy named John. John. Oh, you remember the name. Good. Uh, he stole something. He stole something. Why is John coming? He was in jail for one year. And he was in jail for one year. Thank you very much. Uh, great story. Who is the... You're sharing the story. Okay. Uh, so, June the cowboy. Who, who? June. June. <laughs> Never heard of a cowboy in the name of June. But that's okay. August, maybe? So, June, the cowboy stole some keys uh -huh. and was in jail and out of the punishment. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay. Edward and David. John, I have to be here. I don't know how to be Okay. John, Edward, and Dorfman, known as the Cowboys, they fell from the sky. They stole cookies or keys. I don't know where. <laughs> but I'll go for cookies. Uh, they stole the cookies on a Wednesday evening and they got in prison for a year. 
and Europe. In Europe? Yes. In Europe. So we have two people here. Yeah. Are they fed this guy? Did they hit themselves? Tip them on. Okay, there's no cookies or keys, we don't know. And then we're in Germany and Europe. Yes. Any particular place in Europe? We don't know. Okay, fine. Sure. It's, it's a big world, you know. Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay, one more story here. Please, John, John, it's the food guy from the side. The food guy from the side is the food guy. The food guy, yeah, the food guy. Yeah. Okay. So, he got a, a notification from the courts. He got a what? A notification, a letter from the courts. A letter from the courts. That's it? That I stole a cookie jar. I stole a cookie jar. Shame on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's not the story I, I shared with you? What was the story about? First of all, it's one person, not two. The name of the person was John. John. You know that, that was easy. Edward Dodson. John Edward Dodson. Okay? Good. Also known as Cowboy. <laughs> Fell from the skies, Fox. This is an expression in English with a metaphorical meaning. You don't fell and hit yourself. Fell from the sky was surprised, in other words, because the court on Wednesday evening sentenced him to one year in jail, in prison, because he was caught stealing cookies, not keys, from the supermarket. <laughs> that was the highest penalty ever given for such an offense. That was my story. Okay? Now you see what happened at the end? And uh, you screwed everything up. Can we explain scientifically, please, what happened between the two stories? The story you wrote before, based on the excellent drawing from Picasso, otherwise myself, okay? And the story that was shared now. Why do you think the previous story that you wrote on paper was a real and good, okay, developed story? And why you think now it was such a disaster? We killed poor guys. We thought it was two of them. They fell from the sky and hit themselves. They went to jail for stealing keys. No clue whatsoever. So what happened? What is the message we get from these two different examples of creating stories? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, but in the previous one also there was a passing of the story from one person to the other, yes? How come in the first case it was more uh, impactful? Whereas if you can freestyle, you're still using the same logic, you're still using your same skill, but you, you have the ability to do what you want. It makes it easier for everyone to work together, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough, okay, yes. Anything else? Now, yes. Um, I believe everybody has a different way of reasoning. So um, my reasoning might be different from her. Yeah. So when I give her uh, the story, she can she must be creative to add her own words, which mm -hmm. is different from what I said. So okay. That's right. Now, if you think about the plot, there were two plots. The, the second plot was about this crazy, crazy cowboy guy, whatever his name was, right? This plot here is different. Which of the two plots is more emotionally binding? This one. Why? 
Because the way you wrote the story, some of you somehow felt attached to the story. For any reason. Some of you said, well, I see myself behind this. Because when I came here, coming from another country, for some period of time, I had to adjust. Well, it's not emotional. Yes. You felt part of the story. You probably associated with the square-headed person for being different from the other ones until the story became a happy ending and now you feel like everybody else. In the story of John Edward Dobson, nobody cares what happened with the guy because he stole cookies from the supermarket. Do we associate? Have you ever done this and you went to jail because you stole cookies from the supermarket? I guess not. Yes. Maybe drink more beers. <laughs> All right. But the meaning here is that this story Okay, associates with us. The medium was different. Yes, we were writing things down, so it was probably better because you saw the information, no filtering when it goes from mouth to mouth, obviously. But aside this, the idea is that this story is about us. We feel perhaps like the square person or the round, it doesn't matter, and we can express ourselves through the story. We join it to adoption. It's not the story about us. That's the basic thing. So thank you very much. You did a great job. Remember, poor, poor guy, his name is John Edward Dobson. It's only one person. He, never, he fell from the sky, but he never hit himself because that's a metaphorical expression in English. Okay? And he had to go to jail because of stealing cookies in the school. All right? So let's keep the first story. Okay. We're going to uh, have our lunch break. We're changing a little bit the times. So we're going to add it in a quarter at one. Okay, so bear with me for one, for 15 minutes to wrap things up, and then we're going to have the lunch break now, okay? okay. So we're changing uh, times and everything, but me, me coming from a culture like Greece where time is irrelevant in this world, sometimes things ch change, okay? I would like to introduce you a topic on which we're going to work after we return from the lunch about how to create a story of impact for a company, okay? How we brand our company in a way that through a story, any client, any consumer, whatever, is more attracted to it. Is anybody familiar with this uh, glass uh, uh, eyewear producer, Warby Parker? It doesn't matter. I didn't even know about it. I was looking for stories, and I found this story, which I found interesting. Now, bear with me, because probably you cannot read the whole thing. I'll just read it out loud, and we see what kind of story. You tell me how you feel about it. So, it says, every idea starts with a problem. Ours was simple. Glasses are too expensive. We were students when one of us lost his glasses on a backpacking trip. The cost of replacing them was so high that he spent the first semester of graduate school without them squirting and complaining. We don't recommend this. The rest of us had similar experiences and we were attract, amazed at how hard it was to find a pair of great frames that didn't leave our wallets bare. So we're not ripped off. Where were the options? It turns out there was a simple explanation. The eyewear industry is dominated by a single company that has been able to keep prices artificially high while reaping huge profits from consumers who have no other options. Okay? That's the story. We started Warby Parker to create an alternative. 
by circumventing traditional channels, designing glasses in-house, and engaging with customers directly, we're able to provide higher quality, better looking prescription eyewear at a fraction of the going price. We believe that buying glasses should be easy and fun. It should have you, it should leave you happy and good looking with money in your pocket. We also believe that everyone has the right to see. Almost one billion people worldwide lack access to glasses, which means that 19% of the world's population cannot effectively learn or work. To help address this problem, Warby Parker partners with nonprofits like Vision Spring to ensure that for every pair of glasses sold, a pair is distributed to someone in need. There's nothing complicated about it. Good eyewear, good outcome. Now, how about this as a story that enhances the brand image of a company that is alternative, okay, in selling eyeglasses? What do you think are the main messages here in the way this story is structured? Who is the hero? The people who started this company, right? What was the struggle? There were students, broke their glasses, they didn't have money to get new ones, they had to spend one semester without being able to read or write. Okay, maybe it's an exaggeration, but it could happen. Okay? Now, what is the solution? They started the company as an alternative because they found out that in reality there's something like a monopoly in frames, which is true, by the way. Okay? And they're saying, well, we're going to fight that. We're going to produce glasses, customized, better quality, blah, 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 at prices that everybody can afford. What is the ending? We also contribute socially by helping people in need to get a pair of glasses. So if you buy one from them, then they give one other to somebody who, who cannot afford to buy. Does this remind you of any other company that does the same thing? Sorry? Which one? Okay, uh, how about Tom's Shoes? Okay, Tom's Shoes. Tom Shoes is a company that produces these espadrillas, and for every pair of shoes you buy, they give one pair of shoes to people who suffer from podo nucleosis or something because they walk barefoot, they don't have shoes. Okay? They're not cheap for the kind of espadrillas you get, but still you know you don't buy the shoes, you buy the purpose. Okay? Now, behind this story, there is a purpose. The real story behind it is that we serve a purpose in this world to help people, to give them the right to read and write without problems, without financial issues. If you knew about this company, and I'm not working for them, <laughs> but by reading this story, which is actually taken from their website, it's there. If you go to Work by Parker and you see the website, they have the story there. Okay? So I stole it kind of from them. Would that make you feel better in terms of what this company is about? No matter if you want to buy from them or not, it doesn't matter. But isn't that a story that appeals for its purpose, for its social responsibility, and anything else that we are, we are buying, in a way, from companies with this kind of social Care? That's what the story is about. Again, remember, hero, these guys who founded the company, struggled, lost their glasses, broke them, didn't have the money to replace them, spent some time, okay, with a lot of struggles because they couldn't really read and see. Okay? How they solve the problem? 
let's start a company. Let's find out why this thing happens, and let's start a company that we can produce glasses at better prices, excellent quality, prescription directed, okay, to help people in need. And as a result, we're also partner with NGOs to contribute to make this world a better place. How do you feel about that? Sorry? This narrative is already weak. So it's like bottled water, you buy the bottle and they give some sort of power. And they think that it's just. Yeah, but we get it. Yeah, we get it. No, no, I understand. I understand. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do after we return from the lunch break, so in about half an hour, is we're going to start working on personal branding. So how you build your own brand, your personal brand, and also some ways that if you were leaders and you try to inspire people, how you could use stories, your personal stories or stories of others to influence positively people. Always remember, and we close with that, there has to be a hero or heroes. There has to be a conflict or a struggle, okay, and a solution coming from you, from your products, from your services that makes these people overcome, helps them overcome their issues and problems. The same thing applies when we build our own brand image. Okay? So we're back at 1.30. Don't eat too much, please, because we want the blood to remain in the body, in the brain, not go and stay in the stomach. <laughs> it is, huh? Uh, okay. Okay, if you like, if I can use it in this extreme term, how you can sell yourselves, all right, to a company, to a client, to anybody by telling a story which goes far and beyond the uh, normal CV that we're using to send to people, okay? And uh, in order to... Uh, work on that. I will introduce you to this model. It's not very different what we uh, saw before. However, what I would like you to do, and this is not for now, this is just a prompt for all of you at some point. So whenever you have the time and whenever you want to start building on your strengths and your qualities, let's uh, introduce a little bit of positive psychology. And what I mean by this is that it's good for us to know what our strengths are and how we can use our strengths in whatever we're doing in your studies or in any other kind of uh, work to be in a state of flow. What does flow actually mean? That you do something and you do it like it's second nature. You don't think about it. It comes naturally. Okay? That's what we mean by flow. It was introduced by a professor uh, from uh, the States. His name was Csikszent Mihaly. He was half uh, American, uh, half uh, Hungarian, if I remember correctly. Uh, the guy passed away at the age of 88 a few days ago. 
So he introduced the idea of that when people are in a flow state where they can apply the strengths in full, they feel happiness for what they're doing, okay? And they can excel, they can perform best. I, uh, as a friendly remark, suggest that at some point you do this VIA character strengths Sorry about the color. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. That's okay. So when uh, you can Google that, VIA Character Strengths Survey. It takes you to a website, and at the top it says take the survey. The survey is free. You don't have to pay anything, but it's a credible survey coming from the University of Pennsylvania, which is the, who are the pioneers of positive psychology. And filling out this survey, you will discover your top five character strengths. So what you are known or you wish to be known for in terms of universal strengths, from which by answering the questionnaire, which takes only 15 minutes, you're going to, you're going to get a great report about who you are in terms of strengths. The more you discover these strengths, the more you find yourselves in situations at work or in your studies or in your personal lives where you apply the strengths in full, the happier you feel, the more engaged you are, and eventually you can use these strengths to do other things as well. Okay, so that's really the trend, the new trends in, if you like, management, in coaching, and whatever has to do with leading and managing people. Do the survey at some point, not now, okay? You will find it extremely useful. And once you do it and you find, you have the list of strengths, think of these top five that you're gonna get, and think of yourselves in situations where you catch yourselves using these strengths and being excellent in whatever you're performing at that time. That will fill you with a lot of positive energy, feelings of happiness, fulfillment, and engagement to try the strengths again and again and again in other situations so that you can improve your performance even higher. Okay, once we, we build on this, then we are ready to start uh, building on our brand image. So what I would like you to do now, and since I guess you are meeting some people live for the first time here, when I say live, you understand what I mean, okay? It was not, you were not live before, but <laughs> virtually. <laughs> now you meet, you meet with each other for the first time. I want you to think, we're going to try this with some people, with, not with everybody because it will be take uh, time. I want you to uh, think of one thing you would like to share with the rest of the people here that you wish to be known for. It's time for revelation. Keep in mind that when you can share with others things that you would like to, not very personal, we establish higher levels of trust, okay? So when we are willing to share with others something we wish to be known for, you choose what it is, the level of trust and camaraderie increases, okay? Then on this, we can build personal stories, stories of failure and success, stories from which we learned things that made us better people, and stories that sell our brand in a positive way. I will start with myself. 
And I will tell you that in my career for the last 30, 35 years as a trainer, consultant, and academic, I have one mission in life, to help people engage positive change, embrace positive change. So if you ask me what are you doing, I would never tell you I'm an academic, I teach you know, or run master's programs, or I'm a trainer, <coughs> consultant. I would say I help people embrace positive change. That's how I see myself. And that's how it came as a result of my own history, my own building of my brand throughout the years, where just like everyone else, I went through good times and bad times until I'm what I am today. So in the slides, I have put my personal story, which I like sharing with people. <clears throat> my kind of personal elevator speech, if you like, if you are in sales, you know what elevator pitch means, okay? So it was 30 years ago that everything in my life changed completely. I came from a family which was in a very good financial condition, but suddenly everything was collapsed. I was in debt, and in a situation that I didn't know whether I could go back to normal life. Everything I had vanished in thin air on one day. That obviously, you know, changed my perspective of life and my future. But there was a day that I met with one of my former professors, and when we were having a chat and talking again, I start, I shared what I've been going through. And this guy came back and said, you know what, I remember those times that you were actually uh, talking, uh, helping other students, your classmates and everything with their own problems at school, for example. And he says, probably you can be a great teacher. That was a moment that changed my entire aspect of life. That was a moment that I discovered my true north. And I started building on this. So to do what I'm doing today. I have been in trainings and consultancies for more than 30,000 hours. I have been training some of the biggest companies in the world, in the pharma industry, fast moving consumer goods, you name it. And I never regretted a moment. Even though I had to go through these devastating times in my life, I knew that from this situation, I was strong enough to stand up again. And that's what helped me build my career, my future. And I never regretted these moments of disaster because they helped me and they gave me a lesson. That's my own story. That's how I promote, if you like, myself, by saying that what I went through, I want to share with other people and help them embrace positive change. For me, it was a positive change, even though it started from a disaster in my life. That's the idea. Are you brave enough, and that's in quotes, <laughs> to be able to share with people, not necessarily now, how vulnerable you have been at some moment in your lives and how this has helped you become who you are today. The more you show this in the open with others, the more you are trusted. Because trust is the result of vulnerability. That's when we trust people. We trust leaders when they come to us and say, yes, I messed up. It was my mistake. I admit to it. Okay? And then you trust them. When they just say, well, no, it's not my fault, it's your fault, would you trust them? No. 
Same thing happens with how we build our personal brand. When we can tell a story of ourselves, of our difficult times and the times that we went through this round in life and we're here now to be better people or be the people we are. Is it hard to do it? Not that hard. Of course it depends on the person. There's no doubt that for some people it may be easier. For some others it may not be as easy. There's no doubt about that. But the point is, regardless of how prepared we are for this, how we share these kinds of moments with others, especially moments of truth and revelation, is what makes us be more credible and trusted by other people. So, since I shared you my story, <laughs> you know what happens next, right? <laughs> we are going to lock this, uh, the doors of this room so nobody escapes. <laughs> and I would like anyone, this is not going, I'm not going to start pointing at people. Anyone, after we, uh, we have some time, some five minutes of reflection, to stand up and share with others what you would like to be known for by telling some kind of a story where you discovered this strength of yours and you want to share it with other people. So this time we're going to do it in a kind of nice way by recognizing in you a strength, okay? And sharing this strength with others by also sharing a story where you discover this strength in full, in flow, in a flow state. Smile, guys. <laughs> Remember, if you uh, see yourselves as leaders at some point in your lives, the first thing you have to do is to show how weak you are. If you think you're strong, you're not leaders. Maybe managers, but not leaders. What's the difference between a manager and a leader? Yes, but there's one other thing. <laughs> the manager does things right. The leader does the right things. That's the difference between the two. And by the way, leadership is nothing about being born a leader. There's no such thing in science. A leader is made, and it's a choice. Okay? So, for five minutes, focus on yourselves. Consider you're the only ones in this room. There's nobody else here. Visualize this moment from the past that you caught yourself doing something great. You felt so powerful and happy about it. What was the strength that helped you be in this state? And share with us that strength you wish to be known for and a story where you experienced this strength in full application. Five minutes to think and reflect and then whoever would like to share.
don't start googling your name on uh, Google to find out your story, okay? <laughs> I can see some of you are looking at your uh, smartphones. I'm Facebook. Facebook? But in Facebook, you only put one phone. I couldn't 
I wasn't really happy and I wasn't, wasn't really my field. Um, fast forward after graduation, I then was jobless. Um, I wasn't in my desired field, I was not sharpening my skills because I wasn't really interested in this mechatronics field, or this programming, this electronics, this. But I passed my exams, I passed the bonus. And I got to a point where um, I found myself imparting knowledge to my nephews. And that's when I realized that I like to expose young people to different things. And I wanted to empower people to have better decisions. So this is where my crux of creativity and empowerment came from. When I sat down and had an honest conversation with myself, and I was teaching my three-year-old nephew um, how to connect a battery to an LED, which I felt I should have learned way earlier, for example. It's just positive and negative. And it started there, and now it's to many different things. Financial um, management, I give them money when we go to the store, for example, yes, five dollars and they have to ask me, how much is this? Because they don't know that kind of stuff. So this is my idea of what I want to be known for. In terms of creativity as well, um, same situation after graduating. There was a lot of times where elder people or mentors would say, oh my gosh, you're brilliant, you'll be fine, but not give any direction. <laughs> and I had no idea what to do with my life or anything that was happening. But um, your peers will say, oh, you're so well-spoken. Your parents will be like, oh, no, you're clever, but you're not getting any direction. I'm not sure if any of you have ever felt that way. But um, I also got to a point where I decided, after reflection, that, you know what, I actually, they might be right, I don't know what they're saying, but it's time to equip myself with whatever skills I think I can do to take the next step forward. And that's why I came for this management course as well. So in terms of creativity, I strongly feel that I'm one person that can flip up any story and put a spin to anything and think of different solutions, different ways of doing things. And I've done it before for so many companies without knowing the value of my capabilities. But it took time for me to reflect on that and try and take steps forward, of which they're not perfect. Half of them don't work, half of them are not monetized. But as young people as well, um, I feel we have a lot to give each other and we should just have honest conversations and talk about it. What is one, I'll finish one. <laughs> what is one advice that you would like to give to your colleagues here? Just from, any, from your experiences. From any random advice? Any? Um, okay. What advice I would say is think long term. I feel like we are rushing a lot, and I say this a lot to a lot of people. So um, I have people who are going to university, first year students, that are saying, what should I do for engineering? And I've been there before. And I would just say, for example, think long term, because if you're going to do aeronautical engineering, my advice to you is learn a programming language, learn Arabic, because you've got four years. So even for us right now, if you want to, if you pick up any topic, say taxes, and you read about it, you put yourself in those circles, in five, ten years you're going to be a guru in taxes, basically speaking. But we want to do things faster now. But if you plan and prepare in the long run, let's say, think of five years, ten years, and be consistent in that. Basically, you can change your whole career, you can change your whole life. Thank you.
my manager used this way, like he thought this is the way to make employees, you know, being more efficient. However, it was not working. I mean, I feel like this is for me a sign to look for something else. You know, you shouldn't live every day working under stress, doing something that you don't like, just to live. You know, and. Um, this is when I wanted to do something different, and uh, I asked myself, what makes you happy every day? And for me, it's bodybuilding. Um, I like to work out. And to me, this was just a hobby. And I wanted to take it something further to it, you know, give it with a purpose. So I decided to go for a bodybuilding competition in Dubai, and um, even though I was working 14 hours, I was sleeping maybe like four to five hours for two straight months preparing for this competition. Even though I didn't win, because I'm prepared, you know, pretty naturally, and people can take storage and stuff like that. But after that competition, I feel like I wish I would do this every single day. And along this journey, I wanted to inspire other people to do what they love. Because you ask everyone out there, what is your passion? They say, for example, I love music, I love doing sport, this and that. But what is your job? They, they, they say something way too different. And I wanted to see that person who tell me my passion and my job is the same thing. So that's why I wanted to shift my life and I want this to become my, my full-time job as a bodybuilder. I want to influence people as well. So what I did is I quit my job. I quit my job and uh, I worked as a freelance personal trainer in Dubai for a couple of months. And I've never felt happy. But at the same time, um, I wanted to change. I wanted, wanted, wanted to leave Dubai for some reason. And this is where I met my girlfriend. She, she's Polish and she was in Dubai for vacation. And she was at the gym. Yeah, this is some kind of like a, a weird romantic story, but it happened to me. I was, I, was, I was that guy in that movie, you know? And I, I, I met her. Which movie? This is where I decided to come to Poland and study management. And I'm Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I want to leave engineering and I want to shift my career. And hopefully, I don't want to work for a company and hopefully one day do something that I want, like something for myself. Because I've been listening to motivational speeches every single day, and one of the greatest things that I can share with you guys is. The real happiness in life is doing something that you love yeah. and getting paid for it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to be that person, and hopefully one day I can inspire other people to do it. Thank you very much. Oh. Great. Morale, without any money, the world is lost. <laughs> Thank you. OK, guys, who's next? <laughs> you can share your story. Okay, but it's not so emotional. You know, Don't worry, we're not going to cry. There is a difference between emotive and emotional. We're not being emotional here. We're not going to cry. We're being emotive. We're increasing our emotional reaction to what the stories say. So already I would like to thank your colleagues for sharing. And it's your turn, mate. Give the man a hand, please. Uh, your name, can you share the name for your name first? So it started very complicated in my country because I'm from the Caribbean. So I decided that people from the Caribbean have a mentality, different mentality from people from the center of Colombia. So I, when I decided to study in the center of Colombia, the people used to tell me, like, David, what are you going to do there? Blah, blah, blah. So they didn't trust me, on, trust on me, only my family. Once I did there in the center, was the same situation. So these people from the center have like stereotypes against the people from the Caribbean. Like they are lazy, we don't want to work. So I didn't have any help from the colleagues. Again, I take everything by myself. 
I, I was one of the first, the first person who take an exchange to the Czech Republic. So I started the Czech Republic as well. When I came back, everybody was like, David, wow, you are doing great things. Uh, I finished the university with the highest grades and things like that. When I came back home to my when I came back to my hometown, I sent my CV to a school to teach English. And they accepted me. And I start to develop some skills and I decide that like what I really wanted is to have an impact to people to this. Uh, don't let the other people this happens in the future. So some people say things that really hurt you and, and doesn't allow you to think that you can do greater things, like big things in your life. So I started as a, as a teacher of English in this school. Then I become like Mr. President of Incoming Global Volunteers from ISEC. So I just start to bring foreigners to teach to the kids that the kids, they can actually leave the city and go abroad and study and do great stuff. Now that I'm here in Poland, I'm teaching Spanish to two preschools. So it's really nice and I empower them to see like the world is big, that we are different, but still, um, I don't know, like they can have fun. Like, I, want to, I want to make like an impact, like to change the mind of the kids now because I want to kids and that's all I think. Thank, Thank you very much. much. So, so how is uh, those of you who have said the story, your stories with the rest of your people here, I'm going to ask this you know stupid journalist question. How do you feel? Four journalists ask this crazy you, you won the lottery, two million euro, they say how do you feel? So, what's the feeling? Kind of like relaxed, like you got a way to walk your shoulder, people understand you better or something like that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's nice to have saved yes. instead of kept it in. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for you guys? Yeah. I'll tell you a Polish lady. But it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a comfortable feeling, right? Yes. One we're ready to share. So, what is the feeling the same? Like your three colleagues here, we have enough time to hear a few more stories. Come on, guys. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, and the ladies here. Thank you very much. But, um, I'm sorry, but my public speaking is really bad, so <laughs> I hope you understand. Um, I would like to share my story and I would like to be known as um, a positive minded person and a deaf person. Okay. Yeah, because, um, uh, okay, so there was an event where my parents experienced an economic uh, collapse, like, like you. I'm sorry because we, we were living comfortably in our whole life and then suddenly in 2015, uh, my parents uh, were like um, retired. And then everything changed. I went to school without money, like no, no pocket money, no nothing. So it was really hard for me. And then I'm my, and then there is um, a moment where I have to start my bachelor, and my parents have to sell one of our car. And I was just like, I was sad about it because we never experienced this, you know, like have to sell our things to afford things. So. I was uh, really sad and then I was telling my parents, okay, I can take a one year gap. I can uh, go study another year. But because it's very important, education is very important in our family, so like, no, you have to study. I don't care whatever it takes, I will send you to school. And then after that, uh, into, I was really um, having a positive uh, mind about we are going to be better. And in 2016, um, things getting better, and then I was um, trying to find a source of money myself, so I start my own business in clothing. It's my very sad ID, you can you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a more flexible so it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I start my business in 2016, and then it was really hard at the beginning. Uh, because like, um, you know, everyone, even my ex-boyfriend told me, oh, Sakia, you cannot uh, sell this because this is too expensive. 
uh, you cannot do this, this is not the strategy, and so many bad things uh, has been told to me, but I never cared about this. I always do what I want, I always do like, like always uh, find different way. For example, I failed this one, and I will uh, right away find another solution. So that's uh, I, what I always do. Even though they always say, no, you have to take a step back and you know, don't rush things, you know, you have to think uh, and change the way you do your business. But I was like, no, I want to do, I don't want to stop. Like, I just want to do things. I want to improve, improve, improve. And then uh, things get better. And then in 2016, in 2019, um, I was getting better in my business. And um, that time I made money. And then uh, it was my first time giving my parents money. You know, in Asia, like, um, in Asia, it's like, common to give your parents money, like, as a thank you, like, for raising me, so I don't accept money anymore from my parents since 2019, and instead I give them. So, it was a nice feeling. So, yeah, that's my story. So, yeah, I like what I wanted to tell you guys, so never listen to everyone, you know, like, bad things. So, you have to always uh, listen to yourself, uh, take only the positive things, and never give up on whatever you are doing, you know, you have to believe in what you are doing, and if you like it, I will be successful one day. Thank you. <laughs> Forget to buy it. <laughs> Come on, let's have one more. Yes, a hand to the lady, please. Thank you.
So you being a lady in that town, you should not limit yourself because they said it's only the guy that can, you know, make it. It's only the guy that earn the respect and love you. Just show them that, oh, no, it's not this way. You, you as a girl, you can do it. So um, the spell was actually blowing and blowing and I think of it, okay, I have to come and do my master's. I have to have this management um, mindset. Though I work in a bank, so um, I actually understand how it goes. But I really want to go higher, and that was the reason why I took the master's course so that um, I can, as well, whenever I'm done, go back, um, open another one. Because that's my dream, and that is where um, I'm actually heading to. So um, my own um, advice, or how do I put mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So everyone ladies, don't limit yourself. You have to be a strong woman. Especially for the ladies, you don't, you, don't have, you don't have to give up and say only the guys can do it. No, no, no. The women too, you can come out on the show, you can do it, you can do a lot of things. So that's what I can say. Thank you very much. Well, supporting women. If any man in this room thinks that you are better than women, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Trust me, I have more experience than you. <laughs> and incidentally, in order to mention that, uh, two days ago in the University in Prague, we had a meeting with some uh, influential women from the Czech Republic and the Canadian ambassador, the lady, who were talking exactly about the fact that many women entrepreneurs do not get as much funding as they should compared to men. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. You know what the figure is? Only 1.7% of funding goes to women entrepreneurs. And they're always delivered. And the thing is, the thing is, okay, this is unjust, there's no doubt. But on the other hand, like your example and your example, okay, how do you brand yourself? How do you make known to the public, through the personal stories, how we can make things happen, even in these conditions, where we know that in many societies we still have this kind of male dominance, with an absolute stupidity, okay? And we don't give women the opportunity to prove that they're far better than men in many things. So it's our fault as men, your fault as well, because you don't brand yourself the way you should. I felt sorry in my classes when I attended that event two days ago. Because in our MBA program, when we talk about leadership, we never talk about women leaders. Okay? Success stories of women who have made it <coughs> as leaders or, or as entrepreneurs. It's always a man's story. Crap. Excuse my French. <laughs> Okay, and I'll tell you a personal story. I've been uh, training salespeople in the automotive industry for almost 25 years. 20 or 30 years ago, there would be no single individual sober on this planet to consider this job a job meant only for men, right? Now, in the last <laughs> 10 years or 15 years, I have been training also women sales persons selling cars in some of the biggest brands. They kick the butts off for men. Best set performances. Why? Because women have higher emotional intelligence than men. And there's no science to disprove that there's evidence. Okay? How many of you know that women sales managers in car sales people in cars can be more effective than men? Because we always think this is a man's job. No, it's not. So when you talk about stories and you want to brand yourselves, don't start by trying to compare with men. Just say why you are who you are. That's the whole thing. It's not a matter of comparison. We are apples and oranges. We're not the same. We don't have to be. And that's not the point of comparison.
Uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry if I made your life a little bit difficult this time, but <laughs> life sucks sometimes. <laughs> okay, it's about time to wake up one day and you say, maybe I'm not as good as we <laughs> From any culture people are coming from, including mine. Okay? All right, it's 2.30, we're going to go up until 4. We're going to have the last stretch break now, like 10 minutes. Please have a stretch break. Go back, you men, go back to toilets are crying for being so <laughs> and Let's be back in 10 minutes, please. I want to see men back in the room, right? Not just me. <laughs> Establish the conditions between men and women and who on this planet are perhaps more competent than others. I don't see any reaction from you guys. Sorry. You're silent, huh? No. <laughs> what? That's okay. Uh, the last thing we're going to do and uh, the good news is that we're going to be finishing at 3.30. Unless you want to stay here until 5. No, me neither. Yes, and I'm going back to Prague. Yeah, I'm driving back. Well, it's four hours, not, not, not much. I came from Ljubljana, it was eight and a half to Prague and it killed me. So four hours, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to do is look at how a leader can use stories, their own stories, or stories coming from other uh, prompts, other uh, inputs, or what, insights, to engage and motivate their people. Once a very inspired salesperson, sales manager, was meeting with his salespeople, and he wanted to engage them to go out in the market and come back with high sales. So instead of telling them, hey guys, let's go out in the market and kill some clients, metaphorically speaking, he used this story about Africa. So you're saying every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up knowing it has to run faster than the uh, slowest gazelle, otherwise it will starve, no food. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up knowing it has to outrun every lion, otherwise it will be killed. No matter if you are a gazelle or a lion, when the sun rises, you better be running. Now, you may not find it inspiration and say, why do I care what's happening, okay, every morning in Africa? But the point is, the point is, the point is, instead of telling his people, let's go out and kill in sales, which is so cliche, everybody says the same thing, he was trying to make relevance through a story. Some of you may find it more inspiring, some of you may find it less or less relevant, but still, the idea, the concept is behind this. I want you to think of a leader, somebody who has had a great impact on you, okay? Somebody that you really say, mm, I would really like to be like that person or learn from him or from her and share with us what was that this person had that made that person so unique and so impactful on you. It does have to be any leader, okay? From your studies, from family, from anything that you feel that person made, uh, had an impact on you. 
and tell us what really was about this person that made them such great, <coughs> great leaders. Uh, I guess you have somebody in mind, I'm sure, so we don't really have to wait and think. Perhaps we can go straight and share some stories. So we'd like to start. You are nodding your head, right? So you probably have something in mind. Would you like to share it with us? Yes. Uh, it's okay. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Give her a hand, please. Thank you. You don't have to look at me. I don't have to look at you. Can I start looking at your page? Your colleagues, thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, it should be somebody. You may know them personally. Not necessarily that person had an impact on you without knowing, but in the, your reading is there. Sure. Okay, no, no, no. carry on. Thank you. Okay, so the person who impacted my life the most is probably my, the ex president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Okay. Um, those of you probably know, um, he had a rough upbringing. He was arrested. For something most likely he didn't do, and then he was released with the help of um, a few people actually. He, once he was released from prison, he became the president, and I saw basically how he was able to release the people from you know this troubled time of, let's say, I'm just going to go with. Uh, in 1994 in South Africa, there was a time of apartheid and it was where they would split uh, the people of color from the white and they didn't allow them to mix in between and when Nelson Mandela came into power, he was able to release people mm -hmm. and uh, make them all like whole, uh, you know, just one, one country of multiple cultures and uh, people that basically could look up to him for this and um, I might not have lived through those, that era but I was able to still uh, be a little girl while he was still president and see the impact that he created on South Africa and the people within the South Africa so he basically, um, I see him as positive impact in my life because I'm able to uh, talk with people of different cultures and understand and reason with them and not be, you know, with one single mindset but with multiple. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> what, is the, what is one thing that you would like to uh, take from Mandela and make it your own part of your uh, personality and behavior? To be more reasonable. Be more? Reasoning and open. Because uh -huh. you get people with a closed mindset uh -huh. and they just don't want to be open to others' opinions. Yeah. I would rather have an open mindset and uh, not take for granted, like not be taken for granted as people just, you know, look at me and think, oh, okay, she's from South Africa, she must have this single mindset when I don't want to think that way. I would rather be open and have others' opinions and know exactly what and where I might go wrong in my life. And where are you today on a scale from 1 to 10 to um, achieve this? <laughs> I'm not too sure what you mean. 1 is the lowest level, 10 is the top level. So in terms of being, being what you want to be, where are you today? Technically, I'm exactly where I want to be. Like uh, 5, 6, 7, or what? I would say an 8. An 8? Because I'm not complete. And what would you need to do to become a tenth? Finish my studies uh -huh. and get the job that I want. Okay. And then continue my life to that. Good. Thank you very much. Next, please. I'm sure you all have a leader in mind, not only one person in this room. So who would like to share your leadership, your leader? Yes, come on. Um, so, the person I look up to, her name is Aya Chevy. She is the special youth envoy for the UN. 
And um, the reason why I like her, I don't want to fumble the facts. I like her kind of from a distance, but I kind of know her story. But when you say that it's automatic, is what I call on. The reason why I like her is um, this is a vocal young person who speaks for young people. And they created this position of youth on voice specifically for her. She's from um, Morocco. She dresses pretty traditional, for, like she doesn't, just the way she is. She wears a head scarf and like African print dresses in a fashionable way, and that's how you find her. And when you have conversations with her, she's not a stuck up diplomat. She speaks for young people. She says, listen, um, and a lot of young people in politics these days are saying the same thing. We want to be heard, we want to be part of the conversation. But the way she says it is different. You can see that there's passion. You can see that she knows what she's talking about. She's very learned and she's, be able, she's able to um, manipulate the information in a way that people understand her plight. And you know, it's, it's cool, like even on her Instagram as well. She's a diplomat, but she's doing fun things, you know what I mean? She's going out, she's using slang, but she's also very learned. So she can tell any topic from under the sun from here to there. She meets with all the presidents in the world and she's only about 26. So also to note, she didn't really have a bachelor's degree. They basic, she basically wrote like a letter or something like this to the UN and they just created a post for her. She didn't have education or aesthetic or, or political career to make this happen. Just, I'm fumbling the facts you can read. I actually agree with one boy. And she's got a lot of motivational, not, I won't even say motivational speeches, but if you listen to her talk, possibly you'll hear what I, what I see in her. And yeah, that's the one person I would like to be more like. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Last thing for today. Leaders are like the kind of people who are sharing their own stories, and they're also the people who can inspire through their lives their personal examples or through messages. What we're going to do is I will show you on the screen. This prompts. One is coming from Paolo Coelho from his book Praga, where he says at some point, nothing in this world is completely wrong. Even a stopped watch shows the right time twice a day. Okay? Second, from Richard Branson, business opportunities are like buses. There's always another one. Richard Branson is in Virginia, Atlantic, billionaire, and Henri David Thoreau, philosopher, success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Okay? I would like you to work in teams. Pick one of these three prompts. And let's find a way to use this prompt to communicate to your people hypothetically in order to teach them a lesson based on the prompts. No. Okay? Now, are they clear? Yes, they are. Yeah. What is the first one telling us to an answer? That's for your team to decide. How can you use the story, this prompt from Paulo Coelho, in life at work. What is the message behind this? Can you think of a story, perhaps in life, in business life, where this thing applies? Okay? Similarly, the one by Richard Branson, and uh, finally, the one by Henry David. So you can pick whichever you want. Discuss it amongst you, and let's come up with how you would use each, any of these three prompts in a story, okay, with a team of people you would like to uh, engage and inspire by using this kind of prompt. Yeah? Mm -hmm. right. So, 
as you are sitting, we're not going to break you in things. So let's say the five of you here, pick any of this. Okay? You guys here, you want to join the, the group? Okay, you guys here. Alright? You guys? Alright? You guys? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're one thing. Uh, we should uh, start killing the stories in 15 minutes from now. Okay?
So, do you guys have uh, finally decided which story you're going to? Okay, let's pick one of the, sorry? Let's pick one of the stories. Which one would you like, which one are you hotter to, to sh share with the people here? Come on. Okay, thank you. I want to speak about success usually comes to those who are too easy to be looking for it. So the last one, yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's about my father. He was uh, and he now creating a film that uh, produces microscopes. And he never looked for success. He only wants to help people and to create something professional, something good, a good product. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why he started to be very successful because he never looked. He only worked hard, tried to create a, a very professional and good technology product. So that's why he um, like started to be successful in my country, in Ukraine. And he always said to me that he is very jealous for his employees because when they come home, they, they don't think about work, but he is thinking about work 24 hours a day because he has his own business and he like always in this business, he is always involved in this business. So what is the message? The message that uh, you, if you want to be successful, you have to work hard and not even think about uh, to get this success. You have to have uh, the main idea, the aim you want to. If it will be, you will have the people or... So, like, you have to do what you... First of all, you have to do what you like and what you are motivated to do. I don't know how to say it. Can you say that in six words? In six words? Yes, the message. The message. After six words. Six words. Oh, it's hard to say in six words. I know. <laughs> Nothing in life is easy. So, how can you say the um, main message here to these folks in after six words? Based on your story, from the Like, I want to say that not looking for a success, but looking for do what you want to do. Like what you like to do. Success comes when you find yes, when you purpose find, in life. Yes, when you do something sincerely. Uh -huh. uh, uh, when uh, you do something sincerely, when you will succeed, I think. Yeah. So when you find your true north, this is where success comes. Thank you. Uh, we we'll probably thank you with other stories. Your, your team, please. Give the, the lady a hand, please. Thank you. Um, and what is it? Which story are you picking? Which was the first one? The first one. Nothing in this world is done. Can you please face the uh, people here? Thank you. But I have to read it. <laughs> uh, and take your hands from your. Thank you. When we present, that's for the boys, especially. Never put your hands in your pockets. We don't know what you're doing. <laughs> 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 Don't play with your pockets. Nothing is more exciting than the Shows the right time twice a day. <laughs>
Uh -huh. uh, the questions were, uh, how can we use it to inspire the Yes. Work? And what does it mean? Okay. That means, uh, should I like, explain what? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Do it in any way you like. Oh, if you want to use these markers, nobody will ever be able to say anything because they're not working on it. They, you can talk. Describe it using the <laughs> sign language. Come on. So yeah, that's the watch. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Seriously, I think it's self-explanatory, really. No? Is it? About the watch. About the watch, yes. The yeah. <laughs> but what's the message behind it? <laughs> uh, the message behind it, I think, uh, or more like, I choose to believe that the message behind it is do not be afraid to be wrong. Because maybe you're right. And what else about this message? Just try. Just voice your opinions, give your ideas. You really might be right. You just don't know it until you try. Mm -hmm. And the message about how you treat people are based on this story here. Nothing in this world is completely wrong. The stuff works, doing the stuff works at the right time. Let's say, what does it mean when we deal with people at work? Well, that means uh, uh, even though everyone has their own biases, prejudices, prejudices, yada yada, uh, give people a chance, yes. listen to them, yes. and then make your That's decisions. Nice. Thank you very much. I don't know if it's a true story, but it doesn't matter, it's interesting. When Leonardo da Vinci was painting the, the famous painting, The Holy Supper, he was left with two images. And uh, one of Christ, the other one of Judas. So he was looking in the, in the city to find a, a figure to paint after Christ. So one day he was uh, attending a choir, there was a, a young man, singing in the choir, spotted the face, says, that, well, that's my face, I want to paint Christ after, and he did. Then he started trying to find a person for Judas. Now, Judas is betrayal, Judas is something that you don't really have a face like the face of Christ. And he was looking for three years, he couldn't find the right person. It was impossible. The church was pressing uh, him to finish the painting, so one day as he was walking in the streets, he stumbles across a beggar. A young man who was really, you know, ugly, full of pain in his face and everything after what he's, he went through in his life. So David said, well, that's, that's my kind of Judas I want. And they grabbed the guy, put him in the, in the studio, paints the final face. And when the painting is revealed, the beggar looks at the painting and says, I think I've seen this painting before. Now, da Vinci is flabbergasted. says, how come? He says, three years ago, when I, was, I wasn't what I am today, I used to sing in the local choir. At that time, a painter asked me to paint Christ. It was the same person. Exactly the same person. But after three years, he had changed so much that even the genius mind and eyes of Da Vinci would not recognize the same person. So please give people a second chance. Don't jump into conclusions. No. That's the story. Okay. Who's next? Come on. You guys have a story? Yes. Give the man a hand, please. Thank you. I'm going with the thought of the so, um, success usually comes to those who are busy to be looking for it. So, um, the story of, 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 I would love to share the story of someone. Um, it's, uh, the person is an influencer, which is, his name is Gary Vee. He's always of the opinion that you don't, um, you don't buy success. Um, what, one of the things our, our generation does is they want, to look, they want to look the part of being successful, but none of them are really ready to put in the work. We all, we, a lot of us want to go to Instagram and snap pictures, using Snapchat filters, using every other thing, but nobody is really putting in the work or putting in the lead art. And so the more you, 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 the more you are trying to chase, um, you are trying to chase um, what is not, you, te you tend to lose where you are going to. 
But for those that they are, uh, they are, they are in their rooms, um, burning the midnight candle, those are the ones that the, the world will recognize, not, do, not those ones trying to replicate what is not. So the, um, the moral of this lesson is you have to work hard for what you are expecting. You can't just uh, you can't achieve it by mere words alone. You can't achieve it by mere pictures. You have to back it up with actions. Yes. And um, the, um, like the other that says, action speaks louder than voice. So you just have to go the midnight candles and note because someone is portrayed to be successful, does not mean you should lose your whole path as well. Because you have your own goals, you have your, you have your set um, um, set goals that you want to achieve. Don't use that because of someone you see on Instagram using filter or Snapchat using um, filter. Thank, That's you. The message. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other stories? Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Give him a hand. I'm not very big at speaking to people, so I'll try to take a difference. And so briefly, I'll speak about the first film. She's not in this world. It's completely wrong. Even a stopwatch shows the right down twice a day. Uh, the majority of us in this angle are like management students, so I kind of picked um, an example for which majority of us can fit into, which is, uh, we're speaking from the angle of business, which is a Mark Zuckerberg. Now, many of us have gone Mark Zuckerberg, and his earliest times um, as a business person was um, when he did face match. Now, he did face match while in Harvard University. Probably most of us don't know what face match is. Now, face match was a dating website, which is very unlike what Facebook is today. So it was like, what we all know, we're all in high school, we're like, I could like have a girlfriend, I want to do this, what can you do? Is it hot or not? Um, it's nice, is this? Well, it has to do with photo views. According to the administration of um, Harvard University, they felt this was crap because they felt it does not run with what Harvard stands for. Like, the majority of us no one comes to Harvard, among the Ivy League schools. Now, generally, we all know. Now, it was not what they stood for, and then they took down this site to him. Now, many of us would have just taken that as, you know what, probably I should just stop it, this is all crap, this is all crap. But now, when it came to Mark Zuckerberg, that was a very wrong time in him. Not wrong time, like in this quote, it was like a wrong time. Yeah, it seems like it's not the right time. But yeah, he went back again, went to his, um, he extended on the same project, creating um, another social tool for his colleagues. The next project was not successful. Now, after trying several times and it wasn't successful. Most people like kind of labor, kind of labor now. That didn't stop uh, Mark Zuckerberg after a couple of skill projects. He still went on until got to Facebook. Now we all know Facebook in modern days, even if it's not well used, I mean in Poland, like Facebook is a very big thing. Very big thing. I don't know, in Africa, people have moved past Facebook. But it's still a very big thing here. It's still, it's still a very, very big thing. Yeah, I mean, Facebook has made a name from Facebook. Now he has Instagram, he has all of this. And all of this started from this small thing which is called Facebook. That was a very wrong time in his life, which is like, nothing in this was completely wrong. If someone had just stuck to, like, if someone had just stuck to the idea of, you know what, um, this is Facebook, the school administration says Facebook is not good, you know what, I'm really just going to keep this. He might have ended up as a, very, as a very good salesman somewhere else, but probably he was made for way more than that. So I think, Generally, never deviate from your goal. You try at something, it doesn't work at that point in time, it doesn't mean it's totally wrong. It's your own perspective what means not being right. But it doesn't mean I can't improve it and make something better of. Yes, yeah, so I basically just believe always work on your goals and Thank you. constant work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we're good, huh? <laughs> I think we can, uh, we can put a stop here. I would like to uh, thank you for your presence and your sharings. I am sure you are leaving this room wiser than you were before. Uh, I, there are some certificates here that I have uh, signed with my excellent signature. And as they say in the country opposite Greece, our friends from Turkey, Anchor two Gunimus Boiler all soon, which means may your worst day be like today. It's a nice wish, by the way. <laughs> Even coming from Turkey. <laughs> so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Be well. And as my uh, mentor, Master Yoda, would say, a great journey have you will. Thank you very much, all the best, and see you again.
And boys believe in women. They know better. <laughs>